Shalom, everyone, and welcome to today's scripture reading with Ayabaji. And today's scripture reading comes from the book of Proverbs, or Mishlai, chapter 29, and it reads as follows. He that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed in that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Whoso loves wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keeps company with harlots spends his substance. The king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receives gifts overthrows it. A man that flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous sings and rejoices. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked regards not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. Yahuwah lightens both their eyes. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct your son, and he shall give you rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto your soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that guards the Torah, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. See a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately brings up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in Ruach. Whoso is partner with a thief hates his own soul. He hears cursing and berates it not. The fear of of man brings a snare, but whoso puts his trust in Yahuwah shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment comes from Yahuwah. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. That was the scripture reading of the book of Proverbs, or Mishlai chapter 29. And I just want to highlight a few verses, starting with verse 1. He that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. If you're constantly, you know, being, you know, told that what you're doing is not right, and you don't listen. You harden your neck. You're being stubborn. You're being stiff-necked. You shall be suddenly destroyed. And there will be no solution for your destruction. <laughs> there will be no remedy. There will be no cure. There will... That's it. Okay? You've got to keep in mind that the Most High Yah, in His mercy will, you know, come down with a way to chastise you and to try to get you back on the right path. But if you don't listen, if you continue to be hard in your neck, be stiff-necked, be hard-headed, be stubborn, and you continue in your sinful ways or in your disobedience, then, you know, some level of destruction is going to come upon you suddenly. It will come upon me suddenly. 
if I was going in that particular way myself, okay? You've got to understand that when you are getting that opportunity to get yourself right and turn away from sin, wickedness, iniquity, you know, when you're going down the wrong path, you need to make sure that you listen, that you make the natural and spiritual adjustments that you need to make in your life to get on the right path so that you are not suddenly destroyed. Okay? If you're being chastised, if you're being reproved, if you're being told again and again and again about something in some way, shape, or form by, you know, the Most High Himself, through His Ruach HaKadosh, through, through the scriptures, when you're reading and you're coming across scriptures that are dealing with you on the same thing over and over and over again, you know, you're being reproved. Or maybe somebody uh, is coming into your life that the Most High is, is sending across your path that is speaking the same thing to you that you need to stop. That is a sure fire sign that you need to make some adjustments in your life. So think about that. Meditate on that passage of scripture um, today. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Isn't that the truth? You know, when the righteous are in authority, they're going to do right by the people. They're going to be fair. They're going to be just. They're going to, you know, rule with integrity and they're going to do what is right. You know, do what is right in the interest of the people. So the people are going to be happy. They're going to be they're going to rejoice, you know, but the, when the wicked are in authority, you know, the people, you know, we're sad. <laughs> OK, and there are many Many rulers around the world who are in that category of being wicked and people around the world are mourning. People around the world are in need. They are sad. They, they are not being treated fairly. So we see that in our world today, that we have more wicked rulers, <clears throat> excuse me, than we have Righteous people in authority. So you see what righteous authority and, you know, when the wicked are in authority, what happens to the people, how the people are affected, either in a positive way or in a negative way. Whoso loves wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keeps company with harlots spends his substance. So if you love wisdom, if you love the correct application of knowledge, okay, your father is going to rejoice. The, or if you have somebody in your life who is like a father figure to you, that person is going to rejoice, all right? But he that keeps company with harlots spends his substance. That means if you're, you know, you're hanging out with prostitutes, there your money goes, all right? You don't want to be a person who is spending their money on harlots, on prostitutes, all right? There are many things that you can be directing your money to that is responsible. You don't want to, if that is you, okay, and you have been spending your money in that particular way, you know, that is not a good way to invest your money. All right. You, that is not a good way to invest your time. OK, so there again, the two categories of people. Do you want to be a person who loves wisdom? OK, or do you want to be a person that is keeping company with harlots and your money, you know, is going down the drain with them? If that figure out which side you want to be on, because you see, you know, the results that come from both sides. The king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receives gifts overthrows it. So if the king, you know, has the right type of mindset and judges the right way, 
The land will be established. It will have a good foundation. But if he receives bribes, he's going to overthrow what is what he's in charge of. He's going to, you know, give it up to anything and anybody, you know, because he's not one that judges with the right intent. You know, he he'll, he'll throw the people under the bus. He he will throw, you know, his kingdom under the bus for bribes. And you don't want a person that's in charge that has that type of mindset that will receive money, will receive gifts, will receive bribes. Okay? Because they'll they'll throw that those people and that land, you know, under the bus. They'll overthrow it. And you got to be careful when you have people like that in charge. And unfortunately, those type of people are in charge around the world. And that's corruption. What we're seeing unfolding before our eyes around the world is nothing but sinful corruption. And you see governments, you know, overthrowing, you know, the, their, their land and their people because they're receiving bribes, they're receiving gifts, they're receiving money, they're receiving promises for themselves. Okay, so keep your eyes out for those type of people who are in charge of cities, states, you know, um, countries, uh, you know, uh, you know, locally and around in the, uh, nationally and around the world. And keep your eye out on what's happening with the people that are under their rule or under their authority. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked regards not to know it. Okay, so a righteous person is going to care about poor people. They are going to you know, consider what happens to people who don't have enough, who are less fortunate than them. And they're going to do things to help the poor. But the wicked don't even care what goes on with them. They don't care to even know about the plight of poor people. And once again, do we not see that in our world today? That there are wicked people that have the authority to make a positive change in the life of people who do not have enough. And they are so wicked that they could care less about what happens to poor people. And in fact, they, they close their ear to the cry of the poor. We see it around the world all the time. And they are bold in their stance about people who are poor. And it's a shame, but that's the heart of a wicked person. Okay, so once again, where do you want to be? Which category do you want to be in? A righteous person who considers the cause of the poor or a wicked person who can't care less and doesn't even, you know, care about knowing what's going on with poor people. Let's see the next one. A fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. So a fool just blurts out anything that's that he's thinking about, anything that's on his mind, he doesn't care, just running his mouth, just blurts it out. But a wise man, you know, thinks about what he's going to say until afterwards. He may have to, a wise person may have to see and hear and listen to what another person is saying or see how a situation or a circumstance plays out before he says or she says anything out of his or her mouth, because 
you know, what that per what a wise person is going to say, you know, they know that w their words carry weight, their words carry value, and that their words create their environment. So they're not just going to come out and say anything right away. They're going to they, a wise person may hold their peace. OK, until it's the right time to speak. And so that their words will have a positive impact. A fool doesn't think that way. They just blurt out whatever is on their mind. It can be profanity. It can be vulgarity. It can be something that can hurt or harm somebody. It can be a lie. It doesn't matter to a fool. Once again, which type of person do you want to be? Two different categories. Choose a side. Okay. On any given day, any of us can fall into one or the other of these two categories. But it is up to us to make sure that we are guarding our tongue so that we are not being like the fool that just blurts out everything that comes, you know, this in on our mind that we just don't blah blurt it out like we've got Tourette's or something. OK. We don't want to do that. All right. And there are people that just blurt everything out. Get control of your mouth. You've got to do it. I've got to do it. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that guards the Torah, happy is he. I put in my notes, when people have no proper spiritual direction in their lives, there is destruction. But if you follow Yah's law, you'll be happy. And most of the people that we come across, that's the problem. They have no proper spiritual direction in their lives. They don't know what their purpose is. They don't know where they are spiritually. They don't even have a clue. So you see them dying. Some people are dying physically, like they're not here on this earth anymore. Some people are dying, you know, a little bit each day and they're perishing and they don't even understand why. And it's because they don't have any vision. They don't have any proper spiritual direction. But someone who lives by the Torah, who lives by Yah's law, who follows it, who keeps Yah's commandment, they're going to live that abundant life that the Most High Yah wants us to have. We'll, you know, experience that some level of happiness in our lives, some help, level of joy in our lives. OK, so pray and ask the Most High Yah to show you his will and his purpose and his destiny for your life. To show you his vision for your life. To open up your eyes in areas where you may have been blind. And have had no spiritual direction. So that. You will guard the Torah where you will start keeping his commandments and you will start walking in his ways. The last verse says, an unjust man is an abomination to the just and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. So. When you see if you are just, if you are living upright, if you are living a righteous life, when you see an unjust person, that's an abomination to you. And if a wicked person sees somebody who is living upright and justly and righteously, that's an abomination to them. OK, so there you go. Once again, where do you want to where do you want to stand? A righteous person should see the ways of the wicked person in that particular light. And don't expect a wicked person to see you in a positive light if you're living righteously. You're on two different 
ends of the spiritual spectrum. Two opposite types of lives. As it should be. You shouldn't be, you know, closely associated in your thought processes, in the way that you speak, in the way that you live your life with the wicked. It should be something opposite about you. <laughs> okay? Think about that. And if you don't see that there's something wrong with the way that wicked people live, then you need to check the way that you're living and the way that you're thinking. Okay? To make sure that you're not living like them. So I just wanted to share those passages of scripture with you and just highlight those. Pray and ask the Spirit of the Most High Yah to reveal to you what He wants you to learn, know, do, and obey from this passage of scripture today. And then make the spiritual and natural adjustments that you need to make to make sure that your life is lining up with the Word of Yah. Keep Yah first in every single area of your life. Love him, praise him, worship him, bless his set-apart name, give him the hallelujah praise today. Have a blessed day, everyone. And with that, I will leave you with Shalom.